Listen to Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, Level B1, Oxford Reading University. Part 1 Once upon a time, in the Italian city of Verona, lived two rich noble families, the Montagues and the Capulets. For as long as the people of Verona could remember, the two families were enemies. The Montagues had a son, Romeo and the Capulets had a daughter, Juliet. The family's conflict eventually ended, but it happened at the cost of two young lovers' lives. 1. Two Capulet servants walked down a street in Verona. They discussed how much they disliked the Montagues. Suddenly, they came across two Montague servants. They exchanged insults and a fight broke out. It could have easily ended in killing if the Prince of Verona had not appeared. The Prince ordered them to stop. If anyone fights in public again, they will be punished by death, he announced. Meanwhile, in the Montague house, Romeo sat in his room, sad and lonely. Benvolio, his cousin, entered and asked him what was wrong. I am in love, but she doesn't love me back said Romeo. She told me she would never marry. Love seems so gentle and romantic in theory, but in reality it's a very cruel thing, replied Benvolio. Yes, it is the nature of love, and it weighs me down a lot, agreed Romeo. There are many beauties around you. Look at them, and you will soon forget your unhappy love, advised Benvolio. Oh no, I will love her and suffer forever, exclaimed Romeo. However, Benvolio was determined to help Romeo forget his troubles. In the Capulet house, Capulet was talking to Paris, one of the prince's relatives. Paris wished to marry Juliet. I do not doubt that you would make a great couple, but she is way too young to marry now. She isn't yet fourteen, said Capulet. You ought to wait for at least two more years. I've heard of girls younger than that becoming happy mothers, replied Paris. Young brides grow up too quickly, said Capulet. But if you like her, you can begin to court her. Every year I organize a big party, and as it happens, it is tonight. If you want more English audiobooks with translations and transcriptions, try Eva app today. Listen, read, learn new words, and dive into the world of adventure, crime, romance, and magic every day. It's a great occasion for you and Juliet to meet each other. Talk to her, but look at other women too. Maybe one of them will make you forget about my daughter. Then Capulet gave a list of guests to one of his servants. He ordered to find everyone who was on the list and invite them to the party. The servant confirmed he would do it, but he had a little problem. Actually, he couldn't read, so he wasn't able to understand who should be invited. He went outside and saw Benvolio and Romeo walking together. The servant wasn't aware they were Montagues, so he asked them for help. Romeo read the list aloud, and the servant thanked him and left. There was Rosaline on the list, the girl I love, said Romeo in great excitement. Let's pretend we are not Montagues and go to that party, suggested Benvolio. You'll see how many beautiful women are out there, and forget about that girl. Just before the party began, Lady Capulet had a conversation with her daughter Juliet about her future marriage. The brave Paris wants to marry you, she said. What do you think about this gentleman? He will be at the party tonight, so you will be able to form an impression of him. I didn't intend to marry just yet, but I will look at him tonight and see if I like him, answered Juliet. Then a servant arrived and called everyone downstairs. It was time for the party to start. 
2. Romeo and Benvolio invited Mercutio, Romeo's friend, to come along with them. Since it was a Capulet party, they wore masks so that no one could recognize them. When they arrived at the gates of the Capulet house, Romeo suddenly said, Mercutio, I don't feel like dancing. I feel so upset. But it's a party, protested Mercutio. You simply have to dance and enjoy yourself. Rosaline doesn't love me, and it makes me sad, replied Romeo. And I don't think it's a good idea to go to this party. Why? I had a frightening dream last night, said Romeo in a worried voice. I feel like something might happen tonight that will later result in my death. But dreams are not particularly reliable, so we might as well have some fun. Mercutio was glad to see his friend's spirits rise. They all entered the house in a cheerful mood. A lot was going on at the Capulets. The house was beautifully decorated. Servants handed food and drinks to everyone. The host spoke to the guests, encouraging them to dance. Romeo saw Juliet dancing with Paris and found her fascinating. Suddenly, he felt that Rosaline didn't attract him anymore. Now he could only think about this beautiful stranger. Who is that lady over there? he asked a servant. I don't know, sir, the servant replied. Oh, how my heart is burning at the sight of her, exclaimed Romeo. She is bright like a diamond. She could teach the stars how to shine. Everything looks ugly in comparison to her. I have never felt love until this moment. Next to Romeo stood Tybalt, Juliet's cousin. They had met before, and Tybalt recognized Romeo's voice. No Montague was allowed in the Capulet house. Tybalt was about to take out his sword and fight Romeo, but Capulet stopped him. Romeo was well respected in Verona, and Capulet wouldn't like him to be hurt. Tybalt had to agree, but he was still determined to get back at Romeo later. Meanwhile, Romeo came up to Juliet and took her by the hand. If the rough touch of my hand isn't pleasant to you, I can offer you my lips. Their touch is much smoother, he said. Actually, your hands are rather soft, replied Juliet. And still, I'd like to prove to you that my lips are softer, he said, and kissed her. At that very moment, Juliet's nurse arrived. Lady Capulet wants to speak to you, miss, she said. Juliet said goodbye to Romeo and left. From the nurse, Romeo learned that Juliet was a Capulet. He was in horror. He loved Juliet with all his heart, but they couldn't be together or even see each other again. Soon Juliet learned that Romeo was a Montague. It was terrible news. She admired him as much as he admired her, but now her heart filled with horror and worry. 3. After the party, Romeo realized that he couldn't calm down before seeing Juliet one more time. He climbed the fence and entered the garden of the Capulet house. Mercutio and Benvolio couldn't find him, so they supposed that Romeo didn't want to be found at all. They went home without him. As Romeo stood in the garden, Juliet opened the window and looked out. Romeo noticed her. What is that light I see? It is the east and Juliet is the sun, he thought. The moon is jealous because Juliet is more beautiful than her. Oh, I hear her speak, but she is not speaking to me. I shall not show myself just yet. Oh, Romeo, why do you have to be Romeo? said Juliet, looking at the sky. Why should your father and mine be enemies? 
I wish you could change your name, or I could change mine, and then we would be happy. Romeo thought about responding to her, but he wasn't yet brave enough to do so. Montague is just a name, she continued. What's so essential about it, I wonder? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo could not wait any longer. Promise me to call me your love, then I'll stop being Romeo, he said aloud. How did you get there? asked Juliet, surprised. It's not safe for you to be here. If my parents see you, they'll murder you. Your angry look would frighten me more than their weapons, replied Romeo. My love showed me the way to your window. Tell me. Do you love me too? Haven't I already admitted it? she asked. In fact, I love you too much, and I hope it doesn't make me look silly. Suddenly the nurse called Juliet from inside the house. Juliet asked Romeo to wait while she spoke to the nurse. Then she came back and said, If you truly love me and want to marry me, I'll send a servant to you tomorrow. You will tell him when and where you'd like our wedding to happen. Oh, Juliet, do I really have to go now? said Romeo. Yes, please hurry up. I can't let my parents find you here. Good night. Wait for my servant at nine in the morning, said Juliet, closing the window. I know a priest that could help us get married in secret. I will talk to him, decided Romeo. Early in the morning he paid a visit to Father Lawrence, a local priest. Romeo asked the priest to assist him and Juliet. Father Lawrence was surprised to learn that Romeo wasn't in love with Rosaline anymore. Oh, youth, how easy it is for you to have a change of heart, he exclaimed. Still, Romeo managed to persuade him to help the young lovers. 4. Meanwhile, Benvolio and Mercutio wondered where Romeo was. Benvolio learned that Romeo had not returned home that night. Moreover, Tybalt had sent him a note calling Romeo on a duel. That will be a challenge for him, said Mercutio. Tybalt is a keen swordsman. Whatever the challenge, Romeo will accept it, replied Benvolio. Romeo is already dead. He's struck down by Cupid's arrow, Mercutio joked. And yet they were worried. Tybalt was known for his fighting skills. He had great technique and knew how to move properly. When Romeo arrived, Mercutio made fun of how pale and weak he looked. He thought that Romeo was ill because of his love for Rosaline. At nine in the morning, the Capulet's servant knocked on the door. He came together with the nurse. Juliet sent me, she began. But before I say anything else, promise me that you're an honest young man and you have no intention of breaking her heart. Believe me, I have only told her the truth, said Romeo. I love her and I want to marry her. Will you ask her to join me at Father Lawrence's this afternoon? Will you deliver my message? I will, replied the nurse. You have to attach a cloth ladder to Juliet's window, continued Romeo. Later I will climb it, and we'll spend our wedding night together. In the afternoon, Father Lawrence and Romeo were waiting for Juliet in the church. May God bless your marriage so that nothing bad happens, said Father Lawrence. May it be so. But I think that nothing can influence our happiness, replied Romeo. I am prepared to face any difficulties that might lie ahead. When we're married, we'll be stronger than death itself. I am glad that your feelings are so powerful, but I remind you that the strongest feelings can be as dangerous as they are exciting. These violent delights have violent ends. A milder kind of love will last a lot longer. 
Just then they heard Juliet's footsteps. She entered the church. Juliet, if you're as happy as I am, then speak of our love as if it were a poem, said Romeo with passion. I am so full of emotions, she replied, but they are so strong, and there are so many of them, that I can't put them into words. Let us perform the ceremony, said Father Lawrence. When Romeo and Juliet left Father Lawrence's house, their love union had been made official. 5. When Romeo came up to his house, he saw Mercutio, Benvolio, and Tybalt at the door. Just at that moment, Tybalt called Mercutio a villain. However, Romeo was too happy, so he wanted to avoid a fight. Also, Tybalt was his relative now, though he was not aware of it yet. I have a reason to love you, Tybalt, but it will remain a secret for now, Romeo told him. By showing up to the party you hurt my honor. I cannot let you go. Take out your sword, replied Tybalt. Romeo refused. Angry both at Tybalt and at Romeo, Mercutio took out his weapon and said that he would fight Tybalt instead. Please stop, shouted Romeo. He stood between Tybalt and Mercutio, covering his friend with his arms but Tybalt was quicker. In a sudden movement, he put his sword under Romeo's arm and struck Mercutio down. Oh, that was painful. I'm done for, said Mercutio. I hate you all. Neither of your families is worth respecting. The injury isn't very bad, is it? asked Romeo. It's not as wide or as deep as the sea, but it's enough, replied Mercutio. I'm a dead man. May both of your families be damned. A plague on both your houses. Then he took his last breath, and the next moment he was dead. Romeo looked at him, thinking, My love for Juliet has made me soft. I wasn't brave enough, and now my friend is lying dead. Either I or Tybalt has to go with him. Romeo took out his sword. Fight me now, he told Tybalt. They started fighting. Romeo was angry and it gave him energy. It made him brave, quick and attentive. In a minute it was all over. Tybalt lay dead on the ground. Suddenly Benvolio and Romeo heard the sound of voices and footsteps. The Capulets and Prince Aeschylus are coming, said Benvolio. They are angry because street fighting is banned. If Prince Aeschylus sees you, he will kill you, Romeo. You need to escape quickly. Run. Oh, why am I so unhappy, cried Romeo, and ran off. Part 2 is coming soon. Send this video to your friends who like free audiobooks. And now, listen to another English story.